This is the most important question for any CEO is, what are you gonna do about talent? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the people, period. Hi, and welcome to On Purpose, the video series where I interview intriguing leaders about their purpose. Today, I'm joined by Executive Chairman of XPO Logistics, Brad Jacobs. Brad, welcome. Good to see you, Kristen. Good to see you too. I wanna to start with something we're both super passionate about, which is music. I know you were trained as a classical pianist. Talk to me a little bit about how music has inspired your career. I love music. I love everything about it. But what I really love about music is playing in a group, playing in a band, playing in an orchestra where everyone is coordinated. It's very similar to business. Business, what is your job as CEO? It's to get everyone to come together and to work in harmony and to ensure there's differences and there's, there's contrasts and conflicts, but it's all resolved. It's working harmoniously together as a group. So as a CEO, you really only control two things. You control capital, capital allocation, and you can control time. And on time, at the peak of uh, XP Logistics, we had about 150,000 employees. So if each one came in on an average eight hours a day, it was about 1.2 million hours a day. Now you can take that 1.2 million hours and people can accomplish okay stuff, passable stuff, or you can conduct, you can lead that group, that band, and that 1.2 million hours can be much more focused, much more constructive, much more productive, and get much more done as a result of good leadership in the company. So I, I see a lot of parallels. So one of the things you're best known for in the business community is that you have created probably something that almost no one else has, which is seven over seven one billion dollar businesses you started in oil you then went into waste management waste hauling and then logistics talk to me a little bit about that journey so every business is the same from what i see you need a good strategy you need a good team you need the best possible people and you need to organize those people in a way that's harmonious and purposeful and, and has a good direction so one of the things you've done is something that I think most CEOs around the world would be just amazed by, which is you've completed over 500 M&A deals. My teams and I have. Yes, your teams and you did. But what you've done with that, the value that you've created, and, and as someone who's done a lot of M&A in her life, it's not easy to do. What do you see as the keys of success? From my experience with acquisitions, it's a lot of different things you gotta get right in order to get it all right. And you can't get any of them wrong. So it's, it's a high stakes business. The first one is, are you doing the right acquisitions? Are you buying things that make sense? Is there a compelling strategic reason for you to be doing this acquisition? Is, is the acquisition going to be accretive, not just financial accretive, but to every other part of the organization? When we do acquisitions, the first thing we do, even before the deal's closed, is we ask all the employees of the company we're acquiring, what should we do? What, what should we do differently than what's been going on? And what would be, would we be crazy to change? And then you make your plan. You buy the company based on a plan. Then you refine the plan. And it empowers the employees. Now it's their plan. You acquire a company, clearly you bought them because there's value there. How do you assess the right talent to lead that deal or to lead that opportunity? What are you looking for? This is the most important question for any CEO is what are you gonna do about talent? Because at the end of the day, it's all about the people, period. Making sure that every player you have on the team is an A player is very critical. Now you ask like, what does that mean? Like, what do we look yeah. for an employee? Apart from the skills for the job, make sure the person is trained for the job. You want people who are happy, who are upbeat, who are energetic, who get along with other people, who are honest, people who are team players, people who have, on the one hand, a very big ego and want to accomplish great stuff. At the same time, a large dose of humility and humbleness. So it's, it's a lot of character issues that go into selecting the right talent that's far and away more important than the skill set. Talk to me about that process for you as, as you're looking for you know, any one of those $1 billion opportunities, what are you looking for and, and how are you studying that? So I'm looking for trends. So back in the oil business, the oil was, was a trend because there was no information flow. This is before the internet, this is before the futures exchange were matured. So there was lack of price discovery. So the trend was, there was more value placed on price discovery because you could play off those price inequities that were going on in the world. You can have great people and a great business plan and everything, but if you get the long-term trend wrong, you're in trouble. 
it's not going to work. And, and at the same time, you can make a lot of errors and not be perfect. But if you get that long-term trend right, you're going to ride that trend up. That's amazing. I mean, look, I, I am so excited to see what the next trend that you're going to invest in. And I wish I could invest early and see what you create as your next $1 billion business. This has been so much fun, Brad. Thank you so much for coming in. The pleasure has been mine. Let's do it again. Absolutely. And thanks for joining us on On Purpose. We look forward to seeing you again next time.